I do think that the experience of racism is probably a little bit worse for Blasian Hafus. But like they said, they used to think like I was a drug dealer. This is me. I am what Japanese people call a Hafu, the Japanese term for mixed race people. As a Japanese Nigerian growing up in Japan, I was a constant outlier in a country that is 96% ethnically Japanese. Mixed race people like me are often labeled as not real Japanese, with even the term Hafu originating from the idea that mixed race people are only half of a proper full Japanese person. So today, I invited the two most common groups of mixed race people in Japan, Wajins and Blasians, to see what they think about the mixed race experience in Japan and what common ground they have as the 2% minority. I identify as Japanese. Oh. All right, well, first off, I got two passports, so I'm both. <laughs> I spent as much time in Japan as I did in the States as well, and that's why earlier when I introduced myself, I didn't say I was half this, half that, I'm both, you know? Even if I wasn't raised the way I was raised, you know, you, you can't tell me, like, I'm only half this, that, that feels weird, that feels like really, Inhuman, you feel me? Well, I said yes because one, I was born here. I lived here for seven years. I do represent Japan, my country, for fencing. Flex. So um, it's a little bit different. Um, so I do have to say I feel Japanese in that way. You're a Nihonjin, bro. Yeah. I also identify as Japanese, but I definitely identify as both Japanese and Canadian. I think this is a pretty important point because I feel like both of those cultures are like equally within me. So it'd be weird for me to say that I'm I don't identify as Japanese. I definitely identify as both. And I did grow up in Canada. So when I was in Canada, I think my Canadian identity was way stronger. But I've lived in Japan for over 10 years now. So I feel a lot more like a local and I feel more in touch with my Japanese roots. So yeah, definitely also Japanese now. Um, I also agree a lot with her. I identify as American and Japanese. My household was really Japanese thanks to my mom and the cooking and culture and I would come to Japan every summer. That helped me get close to my Japanese roots. And now living here, a lot of people see me as Japanese too. So I think that's reinforced my Japanese identity. I said yes, and let me speak in Japanese. えっと、私は、ナイジェリアと日本の母なんですけど、so I said yes because, you know, I'm Ghanaian Japanese. I'm definitely both. So I grew up in Ghana, so I never really lived in Japan. But I came every summer like you, you know, you have family. And like family is one way you can really feel that you're connected. So I think I took your statement literally. So I agree with actually what she was saying a lot. So I think I identify as Japanese and Ghanaian. So if it's just Japanese in the sentence, it's hard for me to come forward if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But I definitely identify with both parts. She joined our yeah. team. <laughs> <laughs> See, it was a difficult question. Right, that's such a hard question. Japan is racist. Why do you think Japanese racist? It's hard to say racist, but they definitely treat you differently if you like speak Japanese or not. Like they don't think I speak Japanese, so initial interaction will be English. But then if I speak Japanese to them back, they kind of open it opens a gate. Like they'll treat me better, especially at restaurants. They'll give me better service in a way. Some instances, um, restaurants have different menus. They give you an English menu, which is very limited. Did they give you English menu? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, I'll respond in Japanese and they're like, never mind, give you like, uh, a menu. So, um, so there's that, yeah, there's, so there's that kind of situation. Yes, there are a lot of times where you can experience racism here. Kids. Have you faced any? Me? Oh, like, <laughs> for example, in my old company, I don't know if I'll call it racism, like, you know, you guys can... Names too. 
So, <laughs> there's times where like there's stereotypes that people they put onto you. Like when I first moved into my apartment and I bought like a hibiscus plant, my next door neighbor, who now we've become really good friends, you know. But like they said, they used to think like I was a drug dealer when I moved in next door. For example, right? Because it's like not not It's like it's a hibiscus, you know, with flowers and stuff like that. But then they're like, mm -hmm. like in my corporate. Like they've said things like you look like a mafia tokasa, oh, you look yes. like a co, like you're not kind of meter a koi type <laughs> stuff. I have plants in my house, so they're looking at their plants. They're like, uh, like for sure, there are some things are charged. Like kids are ruthless. I think <laughs> you, you grew up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think like when people grow up, then they have a sensor a little bit, you know. But kids, they say some crazy shit. Maybe they're the fucking. Yeah, you, you know. It's <laughs> over to you, well, man. Yo, they're fucking. When you're a kid, you know, you experience racism, but as an adult, it's more so like kind of like microaggressions, like low implicit bias, like they might not mean to be racist, but they still do it. For example, I went to a karaoke spot and I was like asking for a room and they just automatically was like, Nihongo Jose, even though they didn't hear me speak English to begin with. How do you know that my Japanese is good? It, you don't even know if I speak another language, whatever. Yeah, it's, yeah. Common to hear yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty yeah. common to hear, and it, especially from strangers. Did you like experience any discrimination? Did you? Yeah. I'm kidding, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of, of course, of course, bro. I got jumped a lot. Jump? I got jumped, bro. It was a team effort. Oh yeah. They were organized. <laughs> so you grew up in Japan as a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's not like in the movies where, you know, you somehow miraculously beat up the two kids, and then they're like, oh, I respect you, man. They come back in threes until they until you eventually lose. You feel me? I do think that the experience of racism is probably a little bit worse for Blasian Hafus than like. Asian, mm. like white half foods because I think people tend to judge a little bit more strongly that you're foreign like based on your skin mm -hmm. color I knew one white and Japanese hafu who grew up in Japan most shocking story I ever heard she said that some kids put staples in her sandwich like oh, at gosh. lunch oh my god staples. Guys. oh god I couldn't believe it like that, that's horrible bullying so I think um yeah like even from childhood kids face a lot of bullying here if you look different also I think one thing to note is that I think Japan walks a fine line between like deeply ingrained like long-term stereotypes of people who are who don't look Japanese like foreign foreign stereotypes they'll say things that are like borderline racist but they don't really mean it it's just like a just long-term yeah. stereotypes oh, oh yeah I have that's had a lot of those yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a really big one too yeah. <laughs> So this is a tough one. I feel like if I grew up in the U.S., a lot more things would come across as racist to me. Because I grew up in Ghana and Japan, like you said, a lot of the thinking is, I think ignorant would be the word I would use rather than racist because of the intention behind it. And I know that that doesn't make it okay, but I feel like a lot of Japanese people literally have not seen a black person before. I completely agree with you. Thank you. <laughs> I feel like I belong in Japan. Okay. Okay, that's it. I feel like I belong in Japan. I think it's easier for me because I look really Japanese. So I can blend in more than I think some other halfies or, you know, dabudu. That said, there are still times where people will like treat me as a foreigner. Like Japanese people, somehow they can tell that I'm not fully Japanese. But that said, I still look more Japanese, so it's easier to blend in. And I have a Japanese name, which helps a lot. I also relate to that, and especially being in Tokyo, I don't experience that many situations where I'm identified as a foreigner. But on the other hand, if I do go to the countryside, people tend to see the foreignness in me a little more. And then, so they would speak to me in English when I obviously just spoke to them in Japanese. For the most part, I feel very comfortable and feel like there's no friction between me being here in the Japanese community. I feel like I do belong here and it shouldn't be like other people's like approval whether I belong here or not. I know I personally am Japanese and I know I mean I look the part to a lot of people. I know even culturally I got a face tattoo and a neck tattoo. Come on bro. But uh <laughs> but you know it, it is it is pretty funny when you know as a mixed person you, you kind of challenge how people like perceive race or whatever. It doesn't matter how people perceive me, how people look at me. I am Japanese and I do belong here and it, if you don't feel that way you're just backwards.
<laughs> yeah. I remember growing up, I didn't really feel like I belonged because I never really lived here. We had Hoshuko. Yeah. It's like Japanese language school and you have to sacrifice your Saturday <laughs> <laughs> and your Friday. It would be really tough when you have like the chuzai no hitotachi no kodomo because they are coming from Japan, Jan. Once I was doing, we had to do, is it ondoku? Where you have to read the, the, the thing, right? Oh. I was, reading the, <laughs> I was reading the thing and then it was something something and I said like awesome or something like my teacher and this girl laughed at me and she was like Japanese you know I was like god damn and I was like man fuck this oh, wait, I mean, that's, that was kind of rough and you feel like you, I had a us versus them type thing you know theoretically of course I know that I belong here but like feelings wise I feel the more familiar you are with the place you build community like I don't belong in every part of Japan but it's like my space that I found here which I really like, you know. You said once you go to the countryside, right? And I grew up in countryside called Gifu Prefecture. So Gifu Prefecture is very countryside. Everyone look at me almost like three times. Jibun <laughs> <laughs> をもうずっと味わってたんですけど、やっぱりこうやって大人になって、自分が海外に行くようになってから、やっぱり自分のその一番知ってるコミュニティって日本にあるし、そう思った時にやっぱり自分の方もやっぱ日本なので、そういう意
I haven't heard, had like comments too directly, but YouTube is a wild place. So anytime on, I'm on YouTube, there's like comments, like she'll be like people will say she looks so exotic. Oh. Like the word exotic mm -hmm. comes out oh, a lot. God, yeah. I mean, it's I don't know. I don't I don't like hate it, but it is weird and it does feel kind of fetishy. You're like a special a, a bird <laughs> to put on their shelf yeah. or something in a little cage. To Remember, I spoke out. I was like, yo, I don't like to be called exotic. And then somebody in response was like, but you are. This is going to be crazy, bro. Well, I blocked her right after that. <laughs> <laughs> was like, this from a Japanese person? She was like Cuban from Miami. Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah, it's okay. crazy. But yeah, everything she said, though. 100%. I've also seen ads like at train stations for makeup that are like half gao mitai ni nareru mitai na. So basically saying that, oh, like if you use this makeup, you'll look like a half Japanese, half something, you know, usually white, you know, yeah. person. Mm -hmm. So I think that's pretty fetishizing. Mm -hmm. That's pretty problematic. Yeah, I remember seeing the first, the first time I saw like half makeup. They actually sold like eyeshadow palettes that would make you look more like a hafu. And there are even YouTube tutorials by Japanese people where they show you how to look like a hafu, which is so weird. So they'll like make their eyes look really big, they'll like contour the nose, you know, all the contours, they like, look like half white. It's it's very bizarre. Hafu gao te itta toki, tabun, dare wo black side no kao wo omoi ukaberu te iu, naka, ma media wa omoi ukaberu youna senden wo shite inai no mo, chotto fushigi da yo ne. Ato wa, ma satsue to ka de ne, ano, itta li to ka suru to, ma make san to ka, ma iro na, ma make san igai ni mo ne, tataba nichi jo seikats de mo, hafu to shite, liosin no, いいとこだけもらったからよかったねみたいな、うん、そういい,いい部分だけもらったからよかったよねっていうまあね褒めてるんだけどそれってじゃあそうじゃなかったらねえ。They expect like my life to be easy because like they call me Gemin all the time. Mm -hmm. um, but they say it in terms of, like I had this look. It was like God-given look. Mm -hmm. But for me, I actually grew up very chubby and fat. So I had to like transform myself, like training, losing weight. You know. So it's like kind of like hard work to where I got mm -hmm. to now. But like people think I was born like this, mm -hmm. which is kind of very frustrating. It's flattering, but it's also very kind of awkward for me when people say. Mm -hmm. Boy, give me, give me. It's kind mm -hmm. of like so yeah. new to me too. It yeah. like trivializes your effort that yeah. you put in. Totally. It's a little annoying. I mean, I shouldn't feel offended, but it is a little annoying when they say like half of that kawaii ne yeah. 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 It's like yeah. it's a, a backhanded compliment. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I appreciate that you think that, but it's like half of that kara no no kana like sorry dakena no. Yeah, exactly. So have you guys heard the term zan in the half before? I have. I have. I have not. Yeah. Where did you hear it? I heard it at university when I was going to school in Tokyo, I think. I don't remember who I heard it from, but yeah, it did come up once. Yeah, I remember learning about it and being like, what? What a horrible thing to say to somebody. An unfortunate hafu, because you're supposed to look really perfect. Yeah. And I think it's not only the outlook and the beauty, and also someone, you know, who can't speak English, everyone call Azanen. That's why I always struggling about these words because I ha I'm still learning English and yeah, and I'm my English is not perfect, but I'm trying. Yeah, thank you, <laughs> but I'm trying. Also, the Japanese people think the hafu, hafu no hito tatcha minna you know, speak English. Yeah. Even you know, the German, like everyone in you know, a different country, the show. <laughs> so why do you not feel like specialized? I just don't really feel like it's just like you're obviously going to be treated differently for like being different. Like in Ghana too, like I've always looked different, so I'm so used to it that it's not something. But I mean, I guess it is a thing. Like one, I used to do some fighting before, so at the gym, I just showed up there. I don't know how to do anything right. But then, I mean, then again, we're from Ghana, so. <laughs> but then they say like, ah, no, they are scared of you, and that helps. You know, they are, they are fighting them and they are scared of you. It works to your advantage. So, like in those kind of sense, I guess it happened. But I guess I've been lucky with the environment I grew up in. So, in the U.S., there's a lot of 
people from diverse backgrounds, so I've never really felt fetishized. After I moved to Japan, my university was also diverse, and there were people from many backgrounds. So I, of course, heard the comments that all of you guys said. Like, I never really felt attacked by it. I just kind of explained why it's not always the case that they imagine. So. If I were born again, I'll choose to be half it. I said yes, being half allowed me to live in different countries, so US and Japan for me. It allowed me to be bilingual, understand multiple cultures, and I think that's very important in this world. You need to be understanding different cultures and people. If I was just born Japanese, I feel like I'll be limited in terms of perspective. And so I would want to be born as a half again, especially with my job when I travel around the world and competing. I interact with everyone around the world. So I have to be open-minded. Well, uh, first off, I didn't choose to be born in the first place. However, <laughs> however, you know, I think being mixed, I think it automatically just like opens my mind to the fact that, you know, I might be treated like an outcast, treated like a misfit based off of how I look. So I feel like a lot of like, it throws away a lot of maybe ignorance that other people have to go through in order to become less ignorant. I totally agree with both of you guys. I feel really blessed to be able to be a part of two different cultures and I feel it's expanded my worldview a lot. I lived in Canada for all of my life until I was 18. So I think my worldview was still culturally a little bit more diverse just growing up with cult like a Japanese culture, but I think I still hadn't seen as much of the world and I think I just didn't know as much. But being able to have that that Japanese cultural background, it gave me that connection, as you said, to move to Japan and like really be immersed in a whole other culture to the same degree that I had in Canada. And I think that's not something that everybody gets to experience and I feel really grateful for that. So I would, I'm very happy to be happy. So I feel like it's a little bit tough. I feel like if I were born again, I just want to be me. But if I were to specify it to being mixed, I totally agree with what you're saying about having an open mind because a lot of the times when I interact with people from Japan, they usually think they're fully right. The way they live is how everyone in the world lives. And then same with people from Ghana. And I'm just glad that I get to see a lot of different worlds. So I kind of don't always think I'm right. I'm just like, hmm, this is probably just how I think, which I feel like having that open mindset, there would be a lot less conflict. And I also think it's easier to grow when you're exposed to a lot of different people, a lot of different opinions. So specifying it to like background, I would totally agree with what you're saying. Being mixed, I've been able to um, connect with more people. I think if I was only Japanese, my world would be limited. And if I was only American, then I would also be limited in that way. So being mixed and being able to speak both languages, I can understand both cultures also food, and um, connect with more people as well. So I think that's helped me in many ways to learn about new things and gain more opportunities. Yeah, I think I'm super blessed to have been able to grow up um, in a household where there are two completely different cultures. Um, and I think that's a really like valuable way to know the world because you're very intimate with two cultures from the day you're born. If I was a fully Japanese person, I could still go to a different country or meet other like people from different countries to have that intimate relationship with a different culture, but being half or like double or like multicultural from the day you're born really gets you a head start and I think that's been a lot of fun to experience both, you know, food, culture, and many other things, I'm, yeah, I'm really glad that I was um, half, and I will choose to again. I don't know if it's the same for you guys, but at least for like my grandparents, my Japanese side, they were like super against the marriage to like a black person, African person in general, and I've heard that from a lot of Malaysians as well, and I realized that a lot of those thoughts from grandparents disappear once the grandchild is born, so technically we're kind of solving racism, you know? So, yeah. Little by little. Little by little. So I think uh, that's also a... They'll die anyway. Harsh. No, but I really like that point. Especially like in my case, Japan and America, just several decades ago, we were like literally at war with each other. Sure. 
and then now I'm here. Um, so I think it's pretty cool to see, you know, countries that were once like completely against each other now, you know, are together and, you know, times change, things like that. But I think it's really cool to be a physical proof that people can get along, yeah. you know. Lastly, uh, we'll have Peter already. Uh, <laughs> 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 I saw, I saw <laughs> <laughs> no, so basically, how I took the question is like, if I were to be born again, do I want to be a human being? No, not really. Like maybe I want to be a bird. <laughs> like it would be kind of cool to be a bird, or like be a different being. So let me think about like rebirth. You could be reborn as a human. You could be reborn as anything else, like a river, or like. Fish, so, you know, like those kind of things. So that's where my mind was going. And even if, if I was reborn, like I would like to be reborn to my parents, right? Because I like my parents, I love my siblings, you know. So, like, that's nice. I enjoy that. So, like, the half a part is cool, but it's like if I were to be reborn to my parents, then it would probably have to be like around this time, or maybe I could be born at a different time. You know? So, I was just kind of thinking of it in a different way, like, I'm like, no, I want to be a half a game. Like I've done it once, you know, it's cool. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It would be kind of cool to be something else, but if I were to be reborn in this time, I'd like to be born to my parents, so that would make me happy. Yeah. Yeah, advantages of being mixed race in Japan. Okay. I feel like this might be biased to my job, but I feel like the same things that used to bother me when I was younger because I was mixed come to play into my advantage in Japan now that I'm older. Because when you're a kid, you want to look like everyone else and you want to fit in. But then now it's like, if you look different, you're going to get cast up for modeling, you're going to get all these gigs. And I'm like, guys, I'm actually not that tall. But in Japan, I can pass because they're like, mm, we need a diversity card. Let's, mm -hmm. let's get you in. I also feel like it's just an immediate, interesting thing about you. Like when you walk into a room, they're immediately like, where are you from? Oh, you're this, this, this. Oh, I've never met. That type of vibe. I've come to realize there's a lot of advantages to be mixed as well. Being mixed race in Japan allows you to be that bridge between Japanese people and the rest of the world. Because it's really difficult for Japanese people, for the most part, to get to know people from different countries. We can help a lot of Japanese people that have no contact with outside countries get to know the world. So I think that's a really good advantage. I think I feel the same way work-wise. I noticed that in Japan there are a lot of opportunities for people who are mixed race. If you're doing something talent related, like in the entertainment industry, there is a really high demand for people who are mixed race here. And coincidentally, I wanted to do work in the entertainment industry when I came here. So it did work to my advantage very much to help me get my foot in the door. And also having that bilingual ability with a pretty convincing Japanese accent just from like growing up with it makes a huge advantage from being able to work in Japan. I've also heard from some Japanese people that even if you look a little bit more like foreign, um, but you speak Japanese and you're hafu, you're kind of a more relatable foreigner for Japanese people is what I've heard. So like you look like a foreigner, but they don't feel as afraid to talk to you because there's some relatability like with you having that Japanese culture and a little bit of an Asian look. They seem to find it like easier to connect. And when people hear my last name, they always get so scared because they don't know how to pronounce it. But then they hear my first name, Sakura, and they like the look of relief. Yeah. <laughs> What's your last name? Uh, Lao Hao. Oh, oh it's good. <laughs> Hey, you want to go first? Sure. Yeah, I'll go first. It's a yes if you're bilingual or grew up in a, like multiple different countries, then you understand different cultures. But if I was mixed blood, but just grew up in Japan, only spoke Japanese, there's not really an advantage. I'm yeah. just Japanese. I have an advantage because I speak English. I grew up in the U.S. You know, I've been to many different countries, so I understand different cultures. Just being mixed race does not mean your advantage. You have to understand different cultures be bilingual. Like you said, it all depends on how you were raised. I feel like it also has to do with like how you look as well. It's not just mixed, but like how close you are to your Asian features, how close you are to your other features. You feel me? To uh, respond to what you said, like, yeah, expose other people to other cultures, but also maybe teach people not to be racist, but I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you to look at me and, and be like, oh, look at Kazo. I'm gonna hate black people less. 
like you know <laughs> it's just it's just i don't want to be the reason that's like it's 2023 you should just like already like not be a dick yeah. yeah, it's not your work to do. Yeah, it's like, not my responsibility. Like, yeah. to make everybody exactly. know yeah. how to behave around others. Exactly. Wait, wait. I do still think, though, that, like, I get this, like, idea that you're tired of explaining, you know? But then I really like the point that you made about being, like, a middle point between, you know, like, entirely a foreigner, you know, entirely Japanese, so, like, they can relate to you. And I think there's still value to doing that hard work of trying still to educate and expose mm -hmm. them to different perspectives you know like it's tiring mm -hmm. but i still think there is value and yeah. we have a unique position to mm -hmm. being able to explain mm -hmm. and teach as well as like you know make the change you know we're oh. part of it so that the basho toka kankyo niyo te yappari sono hafu de aru advantage moraye nai かもしれないっていうふうにね言ってたかもしれないけど私は完全に日本で育ってそもそも英語もね全然話せないのなぜなら私の両親は5歳の頃に離婚してずっと日本の教育を受けてきたからそもそも日本語しか話せないってことにコンプレックスを持ってたし黒人ハーフとして田舎で育つってこともすごく大変だったんだけどでもおかげで、まあ、その時はコンプレックスだったかもしれないけど今ではそれが個性に変わってモデルの仕事ができたりとか自分の中では日本人っていうのがコンプレックスだったことが逆に海外にいた時に仕草とかなんかちょっとお辞儀するところとか話し方とかそういうところにも個性がやっぱあってそこってやっぱりお金で買えない部分だと思うんだよねそれが今となっては本当に何よりもの価値その日本で完全に育ったっていうコンプレックスだったことは今は誰でも真似できない価値になってるから誰もが絶対そのミックスで生まれたっていうアドバンテージを絶対あの得られているとは私は思います。はい。